Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. In this video, I'm going to talk about Stellarium and landscapes. It comes with default landscapes, so when you're looking at the targets or the objects, galaxy stars, and uh, galaxy clusters in the night sky, you see a horizon, right? But that's not your landscape. So I'm going to show you in this video how I created a custom landscape step by step, and it really improves the, the user experience while using Stellarium to see objects in the night sky from your own perspective with your landscape. So here's the spot uh, I want to create a custom landscape from, and you know your best spot where you usually set up your equipment. I was trying to use what I had instead of going out and buying something special for this. So I took a laser light, laser level tripod, which I could level easily. And I took a square to make a GoPro attachment that rotates 360 degrees. It's not uh, fluid, but it, it, it will actually rotate into different positions. And that's how I attach my GoPro camera to the tripod. And here you can see the series of photos that I took to get a 360 degree view. I'm using Image Composite Editor or ICE from Microsoft. It's free. You can download it. It runs on Windows. And I want to draw your attention to under Simple Panorama, I'm using the Rotating Motion Camera Motion option. And then I'll go ahead and I'll click on the Stitch option and let ICE do its thing to put the images together. Here we see the initial result where it's stitched all those images together and we'll have to crop it of course. So here we're trying to do our crop and one of the things we want to do is choose on the right and left side a logical place for the 360 degree image to start and stop. So I'm choosing the left side of that garage door and I'm also going to crop off the bottom because the telescope would normally sit on top of the mount probably around halfway up that light on the back of the truck, somewhere in that general area, maybe a little higher. Now as we move on to export, notice on the image size, we can set the width and I'm going to change that width to 2048 so that when I export this out, I just go ahead and resize it because that's the width I'm going to target for my overall image. So I want the width of this to match that. The height will just scale proportionally based on what I change here. So I'll export this and so we'll give this some meaningful file name so we can distinguish it from the other images. In GIMP here, I've created a 2048 by 2048 canvas. I will add an alpha channel to this layer for transparency. And then I'm going to use the fuzzy select tool from the toolbar on the left to select the black color that was defaulted and delete that. And now I'm going to drag the image that I created on top of this canvas. The horizontal position, as you'll notice, is about halfway up and down. That's actually pretty good. From everything I've read and heard other people say, this is about the height you want. But you can actually experiment with this uh, given your location and the results you see. You know, you can move this image on this layer up and down to get the final results you really want. But this is a good starting point. So now it's time to zoom in and remove the sky and clouds. If you had an image that the sky was one solid color and that color wasn't repeated anywhere else and the clouds weren't there, this would be easier because you could use the in GIMP the fuzzy select tool and you could choose that color and just delete that color alone. You wouldn't affect anything else in the image, but I tried that and it started clearing out other portions of my image. So I'm just going to go with the typical eraser method and erase around what I want to remain like the trees and buildings and just erase the sky and clouds. It's a little tedious but it's something that can be done.
back in GIMP, I've selected the bottom portion of the image canvas with the rectangular selection tool. I did a bucket fill using the pattern option. If you notice on the left in the toolbar, I chose the star filled pattern. The opacity is kind of a preference thing. I want to be able to see the other side of the planet or what's not visible on my horizon, but I don't want it to show up as clearly as what's visible in the sky. And that's why I'm adding this pattern with opacity. You could also make it entirely black and then you wouldn't see anything on the other side of the globe. Wherever you have Stellarium installed, I have it under Program Files. There's a folder under there called Landscapes. You'll create a new folder under there that's going to contain your custom landscape. Notice I named mine Mark's Front Porch. So you want to place a copy of your image file that you created here, and this is what Stellarium will load when it chooses your custom landscape. In this same folder, we want a landscape configuration file. So you can just copy one from another landscape and modify it. You can see here, mine is very simple. There's gonna be a lot of settings in the other ones you may not need. So I eliminated everything that wasn't relevant. And so you'll put the name here. I made the file name not have spaces to avoid having to put quotation marks around the file name. And then the other thing that's uh, of interest here is this angle, rotate it, easy. So that's like the starting point for the North Pole. So you have to experiment to adjust that number to get it to, you know, correctly align your 360 degree image with the North Pole. It's also important to put your latitude and longitude here and altitude. These are used for Stellarium as well. So now we'll open up Stellarium and on the left hand side choose sky and viewing options and then you'll choose landscape and then you'll see your custom landscape listed and you'll choose it. You might need to change the time of day so you can just first look in with a lighter sky and then you can check out the landscape with a darker sky. So here in Stellarium, just do a pan and go all the way around. Take a look at the result. See how it compares to what you're used to seeing on your skyline. And you may notice a minor need for an adjustment. Just open your image editing software and make those minor final adjustments. So when I initially created my 360 image, because I don't have perfect equipment probably for taking this image, the where the two sides met together, one was slightly off where the roof didn't align. So what I did is I copied that section of the image and I pasted it on top of the image, which creates a new layer. And then I used the rotate option inside GIMP to slightly rotate it to raise the left-hand side a little. And again, as I said before, this depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. And as just to mention, I did also try to do this panoramic image using my iPhone. The iPhone requires you to um, follow a red line. I think it puts a red line on the screen. And as you stand still and rotate 360 degrees, you had to hold the phone very level so that it doesn't deviate from that line on the screen. I tried it several times. I didn't get a very good outcome. And that's why I did the GoPro camera on top of a tripod. I'm hoping um, you, some of you may have better equipment for getting that 360 degree image or maybe you have a good app better than the default functionality on the iPhone. If you do leave comments that way someone else can benefit from a way you found to do it that even worked better. And so you've done it. Now that you've created your custom landscape and configured it in Stellarium, you can actually see the sky with your horizon and not the horizon from somewhere else. This will help you plan better your imaging session. You'll know when a target is going to rise above obstacles on your horizon or go below those if it's on the opposite side of the sky. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy videos of this type about amateur astronomy, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And also, please Please leave any comments with your experience in using custom landscapes in Stellarium and any other techniques you use that you felt would be helpful to someone else who's also trying to do the same thing. Wishing you clear skies.